I do not. <laughs> Josh Roberts. <laughs> we were just talking about all of course. Yeah, he's just like, oh, I don't know. But my iPod was language. It did glitch and gave me like 800 seconds of fever, but that, that didn't help my score. The score actually. And then all the islands disappeared and were flat. It was amazing. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Yeah. 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 Can I have 15 seconds? Uh, I need 30. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I need 30 because my mom. I'm not really a judge, but. Disrespect <laughs> <laughs> me. Yep. We don't need to do that either. Then we hate you. Two for my Okay. You just ever pour it around? No, she just time judge. <laughs> time judge. Yeah. I know you look at right now. <laughs> she encourages me before I make my decisions. <laughs> She's like, don't worry, I support like, you. Yeah, that was my question. <laughs> oh, well. Are you using this as your book right now? No. <laughs> it didn't occur to me until you started to take it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Did everybody ready? In 1899, the streets of New York City echoed with the voices of newsies peddling the papers of the giants of the newspaper world. On every corner you saw them, poor orphans and runaways, they were a ragged army without a leader until one day that all changed. 1899, the same year that the first juvenile court was established in Chicago, the newsies of New York went on strike. Coincidence? Probably. But it's in their memory that I present the film of the AC. Newsies 2, Electric Boogaloo. Confused? Don't worry. It'll all make sense come the third act. Uh, third act. The first act, if it's not in the paper, it never happened, or the epistemic framework. Examine the after problems from the historic universe, resistance, nonsense, because it's impossible, young rights. Martiality is an idealist fiction, from point of view, situated, cannot understand all points of view, it's a possible reason about the substance moral issue without understanding the constants, uh, the substance which presupposes social and historical constants, one has no motive to make the moral judgment, plus the act matters. Graham explains the next explanation to human behavior requires looking at historical material conditions, the other species depends on having our real needs met. Legal relations will forms not be understood, though the middle mode of production material life conditions, social, political, intellectual life, fear, physical, and sister, needs to be fulfilled in the precondition of any life. Moreover, material needs to not be satisfied once for all, they must be met recurrently, the satisfaction of fundamental condition of all history, which must be fulfilled to sustain human life. Therefore, both ethical and empirical arguments have based in historical and material conditions of group reveal and exams how those conditions previously affect that group of solution is specifically able to set social conditions before you consider near social capitals. The second act, it ain't lying, it's just improving the truth a little, or the ethical framework, ethical system based on constant duty, force from lived Experience bankrupt instead, which ignores the beauty and that promotes human flourishing. Franker one. We're already sent to be demand, uh, demand that we act in certain ways, whereas day life so we're told so we do other things. We are society is meaning more significant rules of duty and obligation to promote social structures, looking morality more broadly, seeing the Greeks from human absence, the central question of morality, constitutes the condition, moral excellence, feminine, moral duty, and step to variety characterization, moral flourishing, life, which is not separate from underlying basic conditions. This at a sense of the question how we feel our TLS are goals to learn based on our experience, for example, musicians judge, but their ability for music, the essence of being a musician, death, the must possibly develop into the essence, what is to be human, the advance of freedom, the loss of human flourishing, came. On any human being's productivity is not driven by particular interests or individual needs, but is directed toward the realization of human essence, needs to be universalized, embedded in constant. Any maxim that entire social cultural world multiple individuals makes possible development of their powers of love, where individuals seek their own realization, they seek the powers of the species as a whole, society is all the provide conditions order, which those powers can be realized, the conscious ethics of the development of the powers of the species activities, health their highest goal, to realize rights, which that consciously act the universe to realize the species, and thus feel as one in essence, to realize one's essence to be free, content autonomy is not satisfied because of the individual's uh, conscious free, even if the external world frustrates the realization of the subjectively free activity, the external world must be transformed to fit our essence, the free action of the subject must be realized for the full freedom to be possible. Thus, the goal of the state is the promotion of conditions necessary for individuals to better themselves. In short, the statement is promote human flourishing, thus the standard is the promotion of human flourishing. A person is definitely opposed to promotion of flourishing because it is denial of individuals freedom to their essence terms of unity mode and ethics individual action not relative to the human essence instead focuses on how a fundamental social rate such class values, how society either promotes or presses individuals' ability to flourish most insidious form of oppression is ideological oppression because it also matters the fact that oppression is taking place by making existing rates seem natural indeed. In the United States the historical projective resource has been fundamentally capitalist, created a system of class relations to entrench the interest of the powerful by which creating false consciousness sustains oppression by giving the means just by itself. Airman explains. Practices within capitalist society appear to be unconnected, political and economic power appears guided by natural non human laws by equal opportunities such as will produce false consciousness. Essential to root in the social relations of society produce continuing crisis and thus need for reaffirming legitimation. The bourgeoisie produces an ideological framework that supports existing social relations. Marxism is a better explanation of but and got to action through its framework of working class union's position of the core capitalist society to transform more rational social formation. My art is not settling whether or not capitalism is good or bad. It's being productive with the extra topical discuss that matter. My art is that we can examine how capitalism shapes ideology used to oppress people in the means we can challenge those ideologies to protect disadvantaged classes. The third act, no, we're just a bunch of angry kids with no money, or the historical material conditions that create the juvenile court. Greenberg explains. The exclusion of juveniles from the world of adult work limits the possibility of their obtaining 
to support their own leisure social activities, they need to justify the leisure working class children held jobs in the early age, only the middle level class children exempt need to work in was a budget more crimes, much smaller, more confined lower class than it is now. Modern capital society, children of all classes want to become a social position, similar ways to inclusion, but juvenile from the labor market may be explained from the failure of the capitalist economy, generating sufficient demand for labor thus. The level of juvenile crime we're seeing present in the United States originates in structural position juveniles in the capitalist economy. If juveniles do not provide for their needs to labor, either society would have to help children meet their material needs or in the form of social policies, or they would have to do something else. The first option is expensive reformers opted the creation of juvenile court, fell one. Two of my class and ethnic contaminants, they ignore the social, structural, and political, economic, and creation of structural fears of delinquency and said, Long as chose to save children and stand in pursuit of their own power for early child saving, satisfied humanitarian imbeciles without generating fundamental social change, the juvenile court provides an ally to avoid fundamental improvement because the society gives a responsibility to provide for welfare of the children by supporting social institutions and nurture them as long as the juvenile court exists. Sorry, it's okay. They also sustain an ideology of the nine juveniles, the heart has set up social rights that are required to thrive. Failed two. The juvenile court never releases or any social welfare to criminal social control because of its penal focus. The judge should not define social courts create all uh, juvenile court social welfare jurisdiction based on characteristics of children which they are not responsible for which effective intervention to improve their lives. For example, the juvenile court laws not find eligibility for services created in the right of title based on young people's lack of access to decent education, out of housing nutrition, none of which their fault and build social groups and innocent bystanders long. The juvenile courts define eligibility for services based on criminality, hire the ask youth rash rationally, illicitly simply and ignore social conditions that invokes a desire to help thus. The juvenile courts defining characteristics simply reinforce the public sensitivity young people act for, proud and defiant will slay the giant, or right? firm explicit ideology of denying child welfare. This must be done by decoupling benefits for punishment after hours. I defend the automatic transfer of all violent juveniles to the adult system. Ours are the right to clarify as long as child welfare benefits are tied to criminality, juveniles will continue to be oppressed as a class. Fell three. Uncomfortable policies, social welfare, penal social control, enable so to expect to so commit to social welfare vulture, for example, public health care, youth crime, identify the social environmental structural and ecological quality of youth violence, which sets wholly different intervention strategies, it's only incarcerating minority youth, and even though the resolution only deals with violence, juveniles starting to expose the point of justification to the state of juvenile crisis, but it's key to empowering juveniles to learn this class fell four. Trying all offenders to change the system for their government's commitment to honesty about forwards and states bringing young offenders in. Juvenile court for social control, juvenile courts are able to take claims by the face of their penal reality and find their legitimacy and impair the ability to function in judicial agencies because punishment is unpleasant to all the juvenile courts become to evade those disagreeable qualities by screaming the reality of the irritability of youth movements like sometimes punishment and treatment. So therefore, first, affirming the rejects of the juvenile system for unified system, especially by like exposing the oppressive ideologies that prevents juveniles from flourishing, uh, 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 from flourishing by force society, taking comprehensive approach benefits, altered and thereby making the burden second, solvency, and fell three and four is the fairly specific order to criminal child welfare, movements dealing child welfare as computer system world, people are the problem is generated by history and the conditions created by capitalism. It's not a matter of their other possible justification of the juvenile system. What matters is the actual historical reason they would put children in the system there that they want to explain holding the standard breed and more accurate account history supported by qualified officers that by historical interpretation. Otherwise, the only possible way to challenge this press of ideology is to affirm. Uh, what do you say? Okay, cool. I actually have a question. What does it mean for the government to do what you do for us? Allowing people to pursue their ends. Okay, so a lot of people can pursue what makes them human. Well, their essence, yes, that's what we can. Their talents. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Why does affirming do that? Uh, well, my argument is that... And that's, you, a, well, that's important because promoting eudaimonia is important, right? Like, that's not my argument. I'm just saying that promoting human flourishing is important because people have to be free in order for them to, like, that's society's obligation, that's contextualized, right? Okay, so uh, society's obligation is to yeah. promote... Well, my, my answer to your original question is why did the... Your, or your original question is why did this affirming do that? The reason is that uh, capitalism creates a system where... Uh, well, the reason why the juvenile court exists, my argument is that there was a child labor crisis where, in the Industrial Revolution, where they had too many children working, not enough adults, so they got rid of child labor, so they made child labor laws that said you couldn't work, and therefore juvenile crime went up because they... Juveniles turned to crime instead of them having a job, which indicates that they created the juvenile system in order to uh, give like these social welfare rights to people in order to prevent that crime from occurring. But that's oppressive because it's ideologically based on something. Okay, how does oppression link it to human flourishing? Okay, so that's below the standard. My argument is that oppression is definitionally opposed uh, to human flourishing because it negates your freedom to be able to pursue your essence. Why? Because if you're why does the oppression? Why does the oppression specifically caused by the juvenile justice system stop humans from flourishing? My argument is that the well, that's felt. I mean, I guess that's. Greenberg is explaining the argument that I just explained, and then the Feld solvency cards say that the juvenile system has a social welfare rights tied to uh, penal control, which indicates that uh, the rehabilitation in the juvenile justice system is just like a euphemism for uh, having a uh, punishment apparatus for juveniles, and to like actually not solve the fundamental issues that uh, surround juveniles. How does affirming solve fundamental issues? How does punishing people not oppress them? My argument is that individual acts of punishment are not relevant to my framework. My argument is that the way you get rid of things is you take out ideologies that are present. So do you right? not defend punishment in the adult system? I do defend, I defend punishment in the adult system. I defend uh, transferring okay. whatever the status quo transfer procedure is for juveniles to the adult system. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. So, all right, let's talk about your framework. What is the epistemic framework? Okay, so the first piece of evidence is Young. Young says that morality universally from like an ahistoric objective position 
can't really, we can't do that because it doesn't, because any sort of point of view presupposes some sort of context. For example, even if you put yourself to another Christian's shoes, you would still contextualize yourself within their beliefs, which indicates okay. that you can't have an a historic view of morality. Then the Graham evidence says the material conditions that uh, so the most your um, your ethical framework of like teleo teleology links or meets the aesthetic burden, right? 